fellow collectors, and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Deluxe Class Gamer Edition Barricade from the Transformers Studio Series from Hasbro. So they have started doing characters from War for Cybertron, and we did get a few of these toys back in 2010, around the time that game came out. Uh, but I don't think we ever got to Barricade, so I think this is the first time getting a figure for Barricade. And I think he looks really cool, really nice artwork here on the front of the box. Spinning it around to the side, again we have some more artwork you can see he is number two. Previously, I took a look at Optimus Prime. I believe he was three. I think Bumblebee is number one. I believe he is on the way from Hasbro. I think they just moved up the shipping dates. I actually got this from Hasbro Pulse, and I think they moved the shipping date up for Bumblebee as well. So hopefully we'll have him soon. Uh, it says Deluxe Class here on the side. Over here, again, just some more artwork of Barricade. And instead of the Autobot symbol they usually have up here, they have this little D-pad, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, not really much going on on the bottom. On the top, again, we just have the War for Cybertron logo. Spinning it around to the back, we have some product shots for the robot mode and the vehicle mode. And then, of course, the uh, backdrop that he comes included. We'll take a look at that in a moment as well. So that's pretty much it for the packaging, but I think it looks pretty sharp. We'll go ahead to get everything out of the box here, and we'll take a closer look. So here is Barricade with the backdrop that is included. He fits in here pretty nice. I'm going to move him off to the side so we can actually see the picture here. And I'm assuming this is just some kind of, like, little town or village or something. I don't remember the game very well. I have to apologize. It has been almost 13 years. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool little, like, cityscape here. Just kind of like an alley somewhere in a town on Cybertron. So I think that looks pretty cool. So here is Barricade out of the packaging. For the most part, I like his design. I definitely love the color scheme. I think that's my favorite thing about him. And the head sculpt, I love the yellow eyes. It just kind of makes them pop so much against the overall dark color scheme, which I think looks really, really cool. Uh, obviously, the thing most people are complaining about is the feet, and I have to agree. They just look really strange. And honestly, they don't really give him very much in terms of heels. And so he wants to fall backwards a lot. I was kind of hoping that these would extend down a little bit further and kind of act as heels, but they don't. Uh, so, you know, he just kind of gets to this point, and by this point, he's so back-heavy that there's no way they can stop him. So you kind of have to, like, lean him a little forward. It's a bit of a bummer. I wish they had done something better with the feet. I don't really mind the design of the feet. I mean, they're not perfect, I admit. Um, but if they could have just fixed the heel problem, I wouldn't mind them as much. Uh, but overall, like I said, I absolutely love the color scheme. The black, the silver, the purple, all that works really well. The head sculpt looks good. Like I said, those yellow bright eyes, they almost kind of look like they're coming out of the shadows because there's so much dark in this area. I just think that works really well. A little pop of color of purple up here. And of course on the chest, the Decepticon symbol. Honestly, I wish it was a little bit more pronounced. That light purple on the silver, it kind of gets lost in there a little bit. I know it would have been really difficult to kind of outline it in black, but maybe if this section had been black and it was painted on that, it might have stood out a little bit more. Just gets a little lost. But overall, I do like the silver paint. I think that looks really sharp. A little bit of black paint here on the shoulders. Overall, like I said, I really do like his color scheme. And I like his design for the most part. I don't even mind this giant backpack here because it kind of has the engine on here, which I think looks really cool. You could kind of like pretend it's giving him like a boost forward. And we're going to see a lot more of the purple and silver in the vehicle mode, but we'll get there in a little bit. Now, on mine, unfortunately, the uh, bicep on the arm that you swap the, the piece out for the gun is ridiculously tight. To the point that I'm worried that I'm going to warp the mushroom peg. I'm hoping over time, you know, constantly moving it for the transformation and whatnot will loosen it up. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. The head is also super tight on mine um so that's a bit of a problem but you can spin the head from side to side it can also kind of come a little forward so just to show you what i mean here this piece here like here what i'll do is i'll, I'll take the backpack off so you can see what i'm talking about because you can definitely see better um there's kind of like a little you can kind of see the peg there so that can kind of move at the base of the neck and then the head's on a ball joint but it's really tight on mine. So I think you can get a little bit of up and down. You can kind of look up about that much between the two joints and look down. And you can certainly uh, turn side to side. But yeah, mine's really tight. I'm going to peg this back in here on the back. There we go. 
So we have a ball joint here in the shoulder, so we can move that all around about that far out to the side. It can spin around pretty well. The backpack gets in the way a little bit. Uh, this mushroom peg for the bicep swivel works fine. 90 degrees there in the elbow. You do have a ball joint in the hand, which we can open this up and you can see it right there for the transformation. So you can get a good range of motion out of there, but because this piece comes up right here, the thumb kind of hits into it. And so you can't really go any further than that. So his hand always has to be kind of cocked off to the side, which just seems like an obvious problem that they could have fixed, but didn't. Um, I don't know. That's kind of what this guy suffers from. Just a, a lot of little things that just kind of add up to be frustrating. Because like I said, I really do like him. It's just a couple things that are kind of keeping him from being amazing. And that's really kind of the summary for this guy. Now this one, like I said, you pop this one off for the gun. And you can tell when we look at this connection, which I didn't really notice with Prime, but one of the parts of the circle is, is kind of a straight edge. They kind of like straighten that part out. So you have to connect it in a very specific way because, you know, the peg is the same way. It has the, the flat edge on the one side. So when I have to turn this around, it's it's it'll move, but it's really tight. So I'm hoping that's just mine and that's not a common QC issue. Um, but we'll use the gun since we're taking a look at this right now. Anyway, here is his weapon, which I do like the look of. I think that's pretty cool. And you can go ahead and just peg this in. Now see here, it's just a complete circle. So there's no reason for that like beveled edge, but I don't know. It's there. So anyway, that connects on. And then that way you can kind of have him having the arm transform into the gun and firing. And just to show that they are compatible, let me grab Prime's. This is the one that came with Prime, and you can go ahead. Now the problem is, because he's got this piece here on the back, it's a little difficult <laughs> to get this to work. It's easier to put barricades on Prime's, but if we can peg that in there, it can work. So there you go. They are compatible. He can use that gun. It's just that because he's got all this bulk in the shoulder, you know, that doesn't clear the best, but it can be done. So let me put these off to the side here and hook this arm back on. There we go. We have a waist swivel. We have a pretty good hip joint. You can kick pretty far forward. It starts to go a little bit out to the side just because the thigh is hitting into the crotch piece here. But you can kick pretty far back. Uh, you can kick to the side, but I have to kind of get the... This is going to stop there. And you'd think this is the problem, but it's just the way that that hip joint is made. You can see how that hits into the bar. So he doesn't really have a lot of out to the side movement. Um, a lot of people have been complaining about these. I don't love them, but I don't hate them. But if you really just want to get rid of them, you can just unpeg this and bring this down and flip this around like you're transforming it into vehicle mode. And then just peg it into the side of the leg. There's really nothing stopping you from doing that. It doesn't get in the way of the feet or anything. So if you wanted to just peg these down here. If I can actually line it up and peg it in correctly. There we go. And you can just leave them down there. I mean, it gives them a much cleaner waist section. But again, you know, that's still not going to help with this problem. But it just looks a lot better in robot mode, in my opinion, without having those pieces hanging off the thigh. Now, I guess it's not screen accurate. Um, but if you just want to kind of, you know, a little bit cleaner transformation with the legs here, you can do that. So that is an option. So I just wanted to point that out. And I'll flip these back around. Like I said, I don't mind them all that much. I thought I would mind them a lot more than I do in person. Because when I've seen pictures of it, I was like, oh, what is that? Like, they're just so in the way. But seeing as how the legs don't go really any further than this anyway, they don't really get in the way of anything. So there's that. Uh, we do have a thigh swivel. We do have a knee bend, but because of all this stuff on the back of the leg, you know, that's not really going anywhere. And there's no ankle tilt, uh, no heels like I showed before. Nice paint here on the shin, though. So, like I said, it's just a lot of things that are just holding him back. Again, you know, this uh, bicep is really tight on mine. Hopefully that's not an issue for everybody else. Um, you know, the, the lack of heels, these pieces hanging on the side, you can kind of remedy. 
Um, just a lot of clearance issues. He's very bulky. And I know that kind of adds to his look, and I do like that about his look, but it just it hinders a lot of articulation. And unfortunately, you know, that's just kind of a bummer. But ultimately, I do like his look. I kind of like the bulkiness. I love the color scheme. But just as an actual transforming action figure, you know, not the best, unfortunately. But he's not terrible, but I definitely think he's worse than Prime. We'll have to wait and see how he stacks up against Bumblebee. But he might end up being the worst of the three. It's just kind of a bummer, too, because this is the first time we're seeing this character in a figure. Uh, because he was not part of the original 2010 line of these. So that's kind of a bummer as well. But, I mean, if you're just going to put him on a shelf and just have him look imposing, then I think he's fine. Um, if you're going to try to pose him in a bunch of different poses, I, I don't think that's going to work out that well. But if you just wanted to kind of look imposing and look cool, then, you know, I think you're set. Uh, and let's go ahead, let's bring in Optimus just for a little size comparison. I'll put his arm back on. Well, actually, you know what? I'll show, first I'll show him using Barricade's gun. Looks a little weird because it's kind of smaller, but... Again, it can be done. Let me put this arm back on here. And then, just to show you a size comparison. I mean, honestly, Barricade is pretty huge for a Deluxe. I mean, let me see. Do I have a... Here is a... Here's Nightshade. Nightshade? Now I'm confusing myself. Nightblade? This is a... Uh... Rise of the Beast Deluxe. So you can see, size comparison, he's definitely big for a Deluxe, which I appreciate. But he's definitely got a few other a few other flaws. But they look good together. I think, you know, building out this universe with these new figures, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm liking the, uh, you know, gun ability to swap. I think that's really fun. Even Autobots and Decepticons, I think that's really cool. Transformation for this guy is actually pretty simplistic. Uh, we're going to start by just going ahead and flipping up those feet into the shins like so. We're going to flip this down and around like I showed earlier. And there is a tab right there that this is going to tab onto. So we just pop that on and push that in. And then this one is going to do the same thing, flipping around and then tabbing on like so we are going to rotate him at the waist 180 degrees and then we are going to flip up these pieces pretty much over the whole thighs and lower abdomen and then push this all together like so make sure this is up into place like that there we go all right, at this point, uh, we're going to open up the forearms. So you can see the obvious seam right there. This is going to pop open. And it's a little weird because of the way the elbows bend. You might have to actually pull this part back. But then we're going to bring the hand up, rotate it 180 degrees, and then fold it into the forearm, and then close that up. And then we are going to rotate this around 180 degrees, so that this all kind of lines up. So honestly, I'm just going to take this off because I'm going to have to use that mushroom peg. I kind of, I don't like to turn it by the forearm because it's so tight. Because it's just going to turn that around in this little peg hole. And since it has that kind of beveled edge, it's just going to uh, strip that out. And that's not going to help anybody. So I have to kind of turn this there we go, and I hope that that's not destroying the mushroom peg. And then I can go ahead and pop this back on, like so. And then we're going to just drop this down, like this. And there's a huge tab right here, which is going to tab in. I could probably show it better on this side, but there's a, a tab on each side, or tab slot right there on each side. So this is just going to come down. And also you want to make sure that you get it over this little tab right here, so... Bring this in over top and click that down into place. So you can see we have the whole side of the car there. So bring this down like so. Tab that in and then 
clip this over top of that. There we go. All right, so you can see that pretty much the whole car is done at this point. We're just going to grab this backpack and unpeg it like this. You can see that there is this large square peg hole and there's this large square peg on the back. So you unhook it from there. Then you bring this up and there is a tiny little tab spot right there. And there's a tab on the inside that you probably can't see, but let me see if I can get in there. There you go. You can kind of see this will come up and just kind of like click into place right there. And then we're just going to rotate this up. You can see you have these many hinges here. And so we can flip this over top. And then this right here has to kind of slide underneath the arm. So you'll kind of pop this in like that. And then this will click in, come along now. There we go. And that just kind of clicks into the arm pieces. And then we're good to go. There is barricade in vehicle mode. I really like the vehicle mode. I think this is my favorite part. Oh, this came unpopped. There we go. Pop that back in. It doesn't have any translucent windows or anything, but I don't think it needs it. You have a lot of nice uh, silver and gray and black and purple. The Decepticon symbol pops against the black a lot more than it did in the robot mode. You got this crazy kind of grill cow catcher thing going on here. Uh, I also kind of like how it has the yellow strips here, almost like eyes. It almost kind of makes this look like the snout of a wolf or something like that. I've seen a lot of people online compare this to like a Batmobile, and I can absolutely see that, especially with the big thrusters here in the back. I just really, really like this guy in vehicle mode. I think he definitely shines more in vehicle mode than he does in robot mode, unfortunately, but... He rolls very well, and if you would like to peg the gun, you can see that there's a square peg right here, so you can pop that right on top of there. So you can drive around shooting at Autobots. And speaking of Autobots, here he is with Prime in his vehicle mode. And as you can see, they're kind of almost the same length. I mean, they're not quite, but it's, it's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you count all of the backwards thruster pieces, I would say... Prime is just a fraction longer. So, I mean, again, for a deluxe, this guy is pretty huge. And these two look really fun together in vehicle mode. You can pretend that they're, you know, chasing each other down the Cybertron alley streets, shooting at each other, crashing into each other. I just realized Prime doesn't really have an Autobot symbol in vehicle mode, does he? Probably should have one, like, up here or something. Anyway, these two look cool together, and I really do like Barricade's vehicle mode. I think it's definitely my favorite out of his two modes. It looks really, really cool. Ultimately, I like Barricade, but he's far from perfect. He just has a lot of small things that all just kind of keep adding up to just really making him not the best, which is unfortunate. Um, I really like the color scheme. I do really like the color scheme. I think that looks great. I absolutely love the vehicle mode. I definitely think that's the better of his two modes. He just has a lot of little issues with clearance. Uh, mine having the mushroom peg on the bicep over here being way too tight. Again, that could just be a random QC issue. I'm hoping that's not a widespread problem. Uh, having these pieces here, you know, up here near the waist. Again, you can flip them down if you want and they don't really get in the way. So you could just leave them down here on the leg, which ultimately I think looks better and probably how I'll display him. Uh, he really needs some kind of heels. The feet are just kind of a mess. I mean, they look a little weird. There's no ankle tilt. He has no real heels and he likes to fall over, so you kind of have to pitch him forward, which is kind of a problem. So there's just a lot of little things that just really kind of keep adding up and just unfortunately make him not as much fun as I'd like him to be. I still think he's worth checking out. And I don't remember the video game too much. I don't remember if he was a separate character or if he was just like a drone, but he feels more like an army builder to me. He feels like I want to get a bunch of these guys and just kind of set something up where they're all just kind of, you know, shooting them, blowing them up as they race through the level. Like, that's what it feels like to me. I really don't remember. He probably was a separate character in the game, and it's just been so long that I don't remember. But he reminds me, I think what it is, is he reminds me very much of the Viacons from Prime. Uh, both with the robot mode and the vehicle mode. So I think that's probably why I'm getting a drone feel from him, even though he probably was a separate character. 
So again, there are definitely positives here, but unfortunately there are a decent amount of negatives as well. I wouldn't say he's terrible, but just something, you know, to kind of keep in mind when you pick this guy up, that there are just these couple little flaws that keep adding up and just kind of make him not as much fun as I wish he was. Because I do overall like the design. I like the bulkiness to him. I really love the design of the vehicle mode. I love the color scheme. So there are definite positives here. Um, but just, just a definite <laughs> number of things that, you know, they just kind of keep stacking up and it's it's making him... Again, less fun than he should be. But let me know your thoughts. Am I being too hard on him? Do you agree? Did you find something that maybe I missed that you think is a flaw as well? Let me know in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.